हरे कृष्णा इस स्थान पर चला दीजिए कौन जानते हैं श्री
परास्त शक्ति विविध ही वस्तु रहते हैं स्वाभाव भी की त्यागों को बहुत किया जाता है तो परिषद ने बोलते हैं शक्ति शक्ति वस्तु रहती है एक ओम भोज भोज्या भगवान ऐ प्रतिदियों से ही भगवान ने जो कुछ रोष आश्चर्यों पर बार इच्छा हो आनंद और लाभ पर बार जो कुछ इच्छा हो तो फिर निजो अंगो थे के अर्थांक सुधिए पामांक सुधिए तिनी शक्ति एवं आनंदो एवं राधा रानी के तिनी प्रकाश कर ले राधा कृष्णो एक ही तत्त्व किंतु रोष आश्चर्य जुड़ने भगवान दुई भेद में चल एक जो ने शक्ति एवं शक्ति मार एक ही तत्त्व हो सकते हो अभेद सत्य हो तारा पर एक हो गई जा स्त्रीतन महाप्रभु तीनी जगते सर्वप्रथम में से राधा मोहिमा ब्रिंदा वने मोहिमा एवं उन्नत उज्जवल में से मोहिमा जगते प्रकाश करें जन तो पूर्वे एक भावे प्रकाशित हो आएगी बहु शक्ति दार आचे अनंत शक्ति आचे तार बोलते तीन शक्ति प्रधान अंतरंगा वहीरंगा एवं सर्व अंतरंगा अर्थात सर्व शक्ति वहीरंगा माया शक्ति एवं अवस्था शक्ति जीव शक्ति सच्चिदार अंत घनो विक्रोह सच्चिदार अंत अर्थात भगवाने विक्रोह चे सौचित अनंत सदम से संदिनी चिदम से संबीज वं आनंद से लादिनी भगवाने जब ये आनंदो इन्न करे दे आप आए लादिनी सर्वा शक्ति के जब ये आवाज़ करे दे आप आए फले भगवान आनंद जीव में पड़े आनंदो में प्रभुवास के आगे ना सही आधारा नहीं तेरी गोविंद आनंद तेरी आधा गोविंद मोहिनी स्वर्गों को फली कृष्ण कांता सिलम कृष्ण ने एक ना मदन मोहन जे मदन पंचस सरेदारा समस्त जीव जगत के मोहित कर चें जे मदन भगवान कृष्ण के दर्शन करे जिन्हें मुक्त हो मोहित हो जाते हैं एक जने भगवान ने एक ना मदन मोहन सिला भगवान जी कहाँ से एक बार समर्पण करे सिला जिन्हें बोले सिले देखो नरोत्तम ठाकुर बांग्लार मुझे बहुत सुंदर भावे तेरी इरादा तो तो सब मुझे प्रकाश करें चल शेखाने बोलते हैं शूक एवं सारी दुजना तादें मुझे कृष्ण परतत्त्व राधा परतत्त्व एक दुई तत्त्व मुझे तारा केस रेस्टो तारा प्रकाश करें चल शेखाने शूक बोलते हैं शोक पहे, आमार कृष्ण मोदन मोहन, शारी पहे, आमार राधा बाबे जब तक पाल, नहीले शुद्ध ही मोदन। आवार बोलते हैं, जे शोक पहे आमार कृष्ण ने माथा एक मयूर पाखा, शारी पहे, आमारे राधा नाम चिता देने। शुभ बोलते हैं, आमार कृष्णे चूड़ा भावे हले, आज सारी बोलते हैं, राधा रानी चरण भावे पड़े, एक भावे नाना भावे राधा तत्त्व के प्रकाश करते हैं, शेखाने राधा रानी मोहिमा सर्वाधिक सारा बोलते हैं नारों जे कृष्ण गोवर्धन धारण करते हैं किरीधारी का नाम किंतु सारी बोलते हैं देखो राधा रानी बाम अंशों के लिए वर्तमान थके तेरी बाम अंश तेरे बाम उंगली तरह जे गिरिराज के धारण करो चें शेखाने राधा रानी प्रकाश को आ चें एक जो भी चीज़ करें चें नो तो बातें गिरिराज ही बोलते हैं ना बाकी गिरिराज धारण करते बातें नहीं आमादें जो तो 
विशेषत राधारानी सम्बन्धे सुखदेव गोस्वी अत्यंत गोपन गोपन भाव गुप्त भाव वर्णना कर श्रीमद भागवते अन्न्य ब्रह्म वैद्य पुराणे वर्णित हम अत्यंत गोपन भाव वर्णना कर शब्द राधा तत्व के प्रकाश कर
she manifests his four features. That is, that Swabhavi Achintya Shakti, Srimati Radhika, manifests Krishna's own Swarup, his original form as Nanda Nandana Sham Sundar. She also manifests his Padrup Vaibhava, that is, all of his abodes, all of his associates, his mother, his father, his peacocks, all of his associates, his pastimes, and his manifestations like Lord Narayan and other manifestations and incarnations. She also manifests as the Jiva, as the Tatasta Shakti, and as Pradhan, as the complete unmanifested material energy. As Srimad Puri Maharaj mentioned, that Parashakti, complete power of Krishna, then manifests, although Parasha Shakti Vividoya Shuyate, there's unlimited features and manifestations of that complete Shakti Srimati Radhika. But it's manifest in three principal ways as the internal spiritual potency, as the marginal potency of living entities, innumerable living entities, and as this phantasmagoria. In manifesting Krishna's features, his original feature is like the sun, the sun planet, the Surya Mandala. And in manifesting his abodes, his pastimes, his associates, this is like the uh, effulgence just around the sun. And then the sun particles are compared with the jiva and the reflected light of the sun, this uh, Pratibhimba Rashmi is the phantasmagoria of this material world. So, she in Tattva, she manifests Krishna's abode. And the same thing in Ras. As you've been hearing yesterday and today, she manifests as, in her own sarup as Radha Kund. And all of Vrindavan by Rust as well. There's a very beautiful um, pastime poetry by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami in his Sri Stavavali called Sri Radha Krishna Ojvala Kushama Keli or Radha and Krishna's flower pastimes. There, Radha and Krishna and the gopis are arguing whose Vrindavan is it? So Brinda says that actually, because Krishna is chastising, that Radharani is stealing all of his flowers. So Brinda Devi said that actually, all of Vrindavan is nothing but a reflection of Srimati Radhika. Her beautiful, restless eyes defeat millions of beautiful deers with their restless eyes. And her lotus-like eyes, the shape and beauty of her lotus-like eyes, defeat millions of beautiful lotuses. Her golden complexion is worshipped by all the golden mountains. Then, first she's saying that Vrindavan is a reflection of Radharani, and then she says actually Vrindavan is non-different, is identical to Radharani. The beauty and the uh, effulgence of Vrindavan, the lotuses in Vrindavan, the champak flowers are identical with the complexion of Srimati Radhika, the kunda flowers are as beautiful as the teeth of Srimati Radhika. So Krishna said, I think that by saying that Radharani is identical with Vrindavan and she's manifested Vrindavan, because I say that Vrindavan is mine, you must be trying to give Radharani to me. But how can she be mine? She's the wife of another. Unless she approaches me of her own accord, how can she be mine? But actually, you say that she's identical with Vrindavan, but this is not true. What she's done is she's stolen the beauty of my Vrindavan. In this way, Krishna is indirectly glorifying Srimati Radhika and her beauty as 
being the source of all beauty of Vrindavan. He said that she stole the beauty of the lotuses, the beauty of the restlessness of the eyes of the deer, and now everything else is pale and wilted, and now she's become more glorious. Just like Srimati Radhika in Gopiki, in glorifying Krishna, jokingly criticizes, saying that his eyes are now so beautiful and splendid because they've stolen the beauty and splendor of the lotus flower deep in the midst of the ponds. So, Chilaravanath Das Goswami, also in his Stavavali, in his Vilapati Smanjali, he prays to Radhakund in this way. Yada tava sarodham sara sabring the sangola sad sarodu apalo chalam madurvari samporitam sutad sarasindhati enayane yumar shakshadubam tadoiva mamalala sajani tadoiva da seva se. He prays that when my eyes got the mercy of the glimpse of Sri Radha Kund, which is full of sweet water, beautiful thousands of lotus flowers, and buzzing bees surrounded by buzzing bees, at that time, when my two eyes got that mercy, I desired to taste the nectar of her service. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami and Vilava Kusmanjali goes in and out from inner consciousness under the sun to halfway Ajumaya the sun to external consciousness where he's feeling intense separation from Radhika and Radhakund and their pastimes. So in the previous verse, verse 14, he had just been uh, seeing Sri Krishna painting the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika and even putting his name on her feet, making a design out of that because his hands were trembling by touching her lotus feet. And his, he was desiring that Nam and Nami are one. Myself and my name are not different. So if I, if I put my name at Radharani's feet and paint my name with red altar, then I will eternally remain there. So Radharani told him, you cannot paint, O Baal painter, O Neophyte painter. She saw him trembling, and then he couldn't paint very nicely. Or you can imagine if Krishna is trembling, the Supreme Lord of innumerable universes, who's part of a part of a part of a part, where he's in and out of innumerable universes, if he's painting right around his feet and his heart is trembling, and his hand is trembling, what beautiful art that will be. So Radharani indicated to Rati Manjari that he doesn't know how to paint, you take the paintbrush. So Rati Manjari, that is Raghunath Das Goswami in his uh, Manjari form, she took the, grabbed the paintbrush from Krishna and was just about to paint Radharani's feet herself when all of a sudden everything disappeared. And then she began again, he began again, rolling and wailing and weeping on the bank of Radhakund. And now the vision comes of Radhakund. And he sees, just as the devotees and Srila Gurudev described yesterday, from Sri Govinda Lilamrita and Sri Krishna Bhavanamrita, this scene is witnessed by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. He's seeing so many thousands of lotus flowers surrounded by buzzing humming bees. And these bees are searching, he says, for honey. They're searching for Ras. So he's remembering that the gopis are telling Krishna, when Krishna went to Mathura, that the bees, and this is reminded at Radha Kund because the bees are humming around the lotus flowers at Radha Kund, that the bees become so intoxicated that they lose all their discrimination on what's a fragrant and beautiful flower and what's a not fragrant flower. So Raghunath Das Goswami, by seeing Radhakund is thinking of the gopis, remembering Krishna having gone to Mathura, that now you've lost all your discrimination, having become maddened by tasting the nectar of Srimati Radhika and the gopis. Now you're sitting on the flower of Pucha. So he's hearing the peacocks 
कहे कहा थे कहा रुचि था रुचि है अनुकोकिलस एंड कोकिली द कुकुस कुइंग सिंगिंग इन द सेवेंथ नोट एंड देयर कुइंग द कुइंग ऑफ द पिजन्स साउंडिंग जस्ट लाइक द ब्लोइंग ऑफ द कांशा ऑफ कामदे एंड ही इज प्रेइंग ओ श्रीमाची राधारानी प्लीज ओ गाडकुन प्लीज रिवील योर स्वरूप टू मी and then when the swarup of radhakund is revealed not what we see this is just the man that is we see nothing we see some water some uh, withered flowers but shri ragnath das goswami is teaching us how to pray please reveal your swarup as it is and then when that swarup is revealed he has an unlimited desire to render all varieties of services to shrimati radhika He sees the jal kevi nila, the splashing pastimes of Radha and Krishna and the gopis in her kund. He sees Krishna speaking to the gopis, how Radha kund is Radha Rani herself. He sees the braid of Shrimati Radhika, which is just like a swarm of dancing bumblebees. And then he said, those bumblebees in Radha kund, they are your braids. and then he sees the restless fish like eyes of shrimati radhika and said that all these fish in radha kund are not different from the eyes of radhika and her very sweet and soft smile which make foam wave like us uh, which is full of foam like waves of sweetness these are like the waves of radha kund which is not waves in water but which is the sweetness of shrimati radhika's smile and when the water of krishna kund goes out shama kund goes over to the water of radha kund then krishna says i feel like i'm embracing shrimati radhika so shri raghunath das goswami is teaching us how to sing and how to pray and how to weep i asked for a day once <coughs> all the services that you give me my chanting and praying isn't so good it's sloppy so he said no you have to take the time just like i do to chant and to weep and pray that the uh diamond ruby uh platforms of radha kund and all the beautiful trees with the hanging ropes and the swings and the trees are so full of big long branches that the sun can't come and make it too hot for them seeing the peacocks and the parrots and the parrots as sri patpuri mentioned puri maharaj mentioned they're debating who is greater radha or krishna so we pray that the real swarup of sri radha kund will manifest in our heart and the pure desire to serve sri mati radhika as a party dance and we wouldn't even know anything about this about radhakun or about becoming radharani's servant if it wasn't for radharani's maid servant shila gurde when i first met him he said to me you are searching for krishna but if you become maid servant to shrimati radhika then krishna will pursue you <coughs> just like radha was saying Radha and Krishna and the gopis are splashing in Radha Kund, and Rati Mantri sees that Krishna has thrown so much water on Radha Rani that she's going to cry and abusing Krishna. So Rati Mantri starts splashing water at Krishna to retaliate, and all of a sudden everything disappears. The Kund disappears, Radha Rani, the water, and everything, and then he's rolling on the ground and weeping and teaching us to weep. Four minutes.
that these energies um, of Surup Shakti, they can be um, distinguished as Ananda, Ananda, Ananda Se Ladini, and the Ladini potency, the pleasure potency of the Lord. Sadam Se Sadini, that the um, existence potency of the Lord, and Chidam Se Sambit, Sambit Shakti, the knowledge potency. So, of the pleasure potency, then it's explained Radha Krishna Pranayakriti Ladini Shakti Asma Ekatmanava Pibubi Puram Dehum Vedam Chachotum. That Srimati Radhika, who is the um, transformation of the Ladini Shakti, that the Lord, his Ladini Shakti is said to have two features, Murt and Amurt. One with form and without form. When that Ladini Shakti is reposed within the Lord, then that Ladini Shakti, that Pranoy, uh, this is Amunt. And when that Ladini Shakti, it manifests a form, uh, then that Ladini Shakti uh, manifests a Srimati Radhika. Radha, Krishna, Pranoy, Prakriti. That when the love of, of Krishna, it manifests, then this is Srimati Radhika. That Radha and Krishna, that they are Eka Atma, one Atma, Api Bhuvi Puram Deham Vedam Atoto. But for the purpose of Ras, for the purpose of um, their transcendental pleasure, then eternally they manifest two forms. So Srila Gurudev has explained that one, that, that Krishna who is in Vamsipat, and there, in Vamsibhat, he was designed Ras, Ras. And manifesting from his left side was the most beautiful Kishori. And with great, um, with great love, Rad, Anurad, then she's running towards Krishna, Davati, and she's calling. So that, who, that person who's calling Krishna, 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 with great love, while she running towards him, Srimati Radhika. So, Srila Jiva Goswami, he's explained this Radha Tattva um, in a very, very interesting way, taking from Sri Brahma Samhita. He's quoted the, in his um, commentary on the 37th verse, Ananda Chidmoya Rasa Pratibhavi Tavya, Tapinya Evani Jarupa Tayakulavya, He's explained that when there's meeting of Ananda and Chit, that Ananda, Ladini Shakti, the personification, Srimati Radhika, and Chit, Sambit Shakti, uh, the predominant deity of Chit Shakti is Krishna himself. So when there's Ananda, Moya, Ananda, Chit, Moya, Ras, when there's this um, meeting of Rasa, there's Prati Bhavita Bhir. So he's explained that Bhavita, the word Bhavita, it means to infuse or to, 
to, to inspire or to permeate from head to toe. But in this word, pratipavita beer, then he uses the prefix prati. And this prati means that it's having a reverse um, um, action or, or reciprocation. That he gives the example of um, prati upakrita saha. Prati upakrita saha. That just like somebody, they want to do some welfare work. And then they open a dispensary and they're giving out some medicine. So, in the same way, Krishna, he's a Dwight Yang Paratapa. He's one. But he's manifesting praying on all different levels. And he's manifesting through the body of Srimati Radhika. But though Srimati Radhika and Krishna are one, and she's manifested from him. But now, he, being the person who's manifested this frame, or this shop of frame, or this mind of frame, but now he himself, uh, he's running as a beggar, crying for this frame. So, he says, Ananda Chinmoy Rasa Patipavitavya. That Krishna, that though he's Rasa Vaisaha, he's Rasik Shekhar, but now he's running. Uh, my spiritual master, Srila Gorgon Goswami Maharaj, he has explained in a very, very nice pastime that once there was to be um, a meeting between Radha and Krishna. And Srimati Radhika, uh, she was waiting in the Kunj. And the time had passed. And she was waiting and waiting and waiting. But Krishna, he did not come. Then Lalita. She met one of the sakis of Chandravali, Sorbia. And Sorbia says, Oh, oh, Lalita, do you know where Krishna is? He is in my sakis kunj. Lalita, she went, and immediately she told Srimati Radhika. Srimati Radhika, she developed so much man, said that black cheetah, I don't want to see anything black. Cover my head. Cover my eyebrows, nothing black. Then, after some time, Krishna, he starts to come and he comes to Kunja Srimati Radhika. He meets Lalita there and he says, Oh, I know that Radhika, that she's, she's undergoing great pain of separation. That, but if I meet her, then definitely her separation will be. Immediately Lalita, she became so angry. She said, how dare you? You think that my Pransaki, that she will have to cry for you? No, you will have to cry for her. And immediately, she kicked him out. Krishna, he went to the banks of the Yamuna. And there he was crying and crying and crying. Then, by arrangement, Purnamasi, she came. And she said, oh, I know why you're undergoing so much um, pain. And she beckoned for Brinda Devi to come. Brinda saw Krishna in this position. And she said, I can solve your problem. But first, you have to give up your threefold bedroom form. You have to give up your very beautiful black curly hair. You have to give up your peacock feather. And definitely, that which is bewitching, tantalizing, and stealing the hearts of the gopis, you have to give up your flute. Immediately, Krishna, he gave up. He gave up Tribhanga Lalitnu. He gave up the flute. He gave up his curly hair. Huh? And now, he manifested very beautiful form, shaved head, huh? with um, sannyas cloth. And then, Vrinda, she taught him one song and gave him one instrument. And this song that, oh, that Radhika, that she's crying for Krishna, but now that Kamal, he's crying from grove to grove, place to place, and he's crying and crying and crying and crying uh, for Srimati Radhika. And then he went and he started to play his instrument, and he went to the grove of Srimati Radhika. Then Lalita Vishaka. They heard this very, very beautiful song coming in a very, very sweet way into their ears. And they said, 
Oh, Sanyas Thakur, where did you learn this very beautiful song? Sanyas said, I learned from my Guru Gandhavite. He said, oh, so you're Sanyas Thakur, can you tell fortune? He said, yes, I can tell. He said, can you tell the fortune of Goswamini? Oh, definitely. Then they went into the inner village, and then they brought her. But now, she went to Radhika, her veil was covering her head, and then they presented her hand to Sanyasi Thakur. Sanyasi Thakur said, oh, I did not touch the hand of this, of, of, of this lady. They said, why? How will you tell her fortune? Said, oh, I will have to read the lines of her forehead. Said, oh, but Aswamini, she never shows her face to any Purush, to any male. He said, what do you think? You think that I'm some ordinary male? I'm Sanyasi. I've given up all of this. But this is not for us. Huh? Because we see that when Sanyasis are vulnerable, then we go and we dip that with ladies. Then what happens? Accident. But Krishna, he said, Oh, I am not ordinary Sanyasi. So then, by and by, then they lifted the veil from the face of Srimati Radhika, and then lifting the veil from the face of Srimati Radhika, then the two, the eyes of Radha and Krishna, they met. And Krishna, who's crying and crying and crying for love of Srimati Radhika, uh, now uh, he gave up his form of sannyasi, uh, and then he assumed uh, his three bundle leaf form, and there there's very, very sweet greeting. That Krishna, he's always, always, always crying for Srimati Radhika. And Shrimati Radhika, she's Mahabhav Chintamani. That is explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita. That whatever desire that Krishna has to fulfill, that all these, these desires are automatically fulfilled by Shrimati Radhika. That to have to enjoy and that in our grasp to reach more and more exalted states, then it cannot reach more and more exalted states without um, um, many gopis being there. So, Ananda Moy, Ananda Chin Moy Rasa Pratipapa Tabi, Tabiya Ebedi Jirupata, Kalabiya. That she manifests from her body, Kaya Bihuru, Sakis, Lalita, Vishaka, Tunda Vidya, so many Sakis, uh, to increase the exaltation of Ras. And in this way, uh, she is manifesting praying on all platforms. That the praying which is there within the maid servants of Vrindavan, that this praying, this is coming from Srimati Radhika. The praying which is there within the heart of Nanda Baba, Mother Yashoda, all of those in Vatsalipa, this praying is coming from Srimati Radhika. The praying which is there within the queens of Walker, within the residence of Vaikuntha, this is coming from Srimati Radhika. And for the living entities who are positioned in this material world, then the most minute aspect, atomic aspect or molecule of that praying from the Radhika, then that manifests in this world as Shraddha, Paramatic Shraddha. Shraddha Shraddha Vishwas Kahe, Sudhida Nishjoy. Krishna Bhakti Kuali Sabha, Kama Krita. In this way, Srimati Radhika, she's fulfilling all the desires of Krishna, especially Prabhupada's. And she is bringing countless souls huh, into the association to serve Krishna huh, with love and affection. Right? To come with love and affection. <laughs> Shishiman 
So Srila Gurudev has asked me to speak something briefly on Radha Tattva. Radha Tattva is so extraordinarily high, I am utterly unqualified to speak on this topic, but I will say some words that I have heard and try and repeat like a parrot some of the tattva and perhaps one day by Srila Gurudev's mercy I will understand something of this tattva. So it's stated very clearly that Radha Purna Shakti Krishna Purna Shakti Man Due Vastu Veda Bhai Shastra Praman That Radha and Radha is the Shakti, Krishna Shakti Man. There is no difference, ultimately it's described. They're non-different, just as heat and fire are non-different, or musk and incent is non-different. So this is the understanding of Radha and Krishna, as we've heard this evening. Srimati Radharani manifested from Krishna's left side for vilas, for amorous pastimes, for Krishna to experience very wonderful exchanges of rasa. So who is Radha? Gurudev is asking for tattva. So, Devi Krishna Mayi Prakta Radhika Paradevata. This is who is Srimati Radhika? She is the uh, counterpart of Krishna. She is the central figure in all the Lakshmis. Sarva Lakshmi Mayi Sarva Kanti Samohini Para. This is who is Srimati Radhika? She is the center figure of all the goddesses of fortune. But to understand Krishna's Swarup, Swarup, Krishna's own form, we can only understand this through the activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has descended at this time to give us a picture, an understanding of the glory of Srimati Radhika. Radha Krishna Pranaya Rikuti Hadini Shakti Asma Eka Ati Kubi Gay Goto. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikritiya Khadini Shakti Asma Ekatana Ati Bodhi Guru Gita Gadoto. So this is describing the oneness of Radha. And this is Krishna's internal potency. Radha Bhav Duti Subalitam Nomi Krishna Swarupam. This is the nature of Radha. And furthermore, in uh, the sixth verse of Adi Lila, Krishna's Kaviraj is very clearly describing the glory of Radha. Radha, uh, Shri Radhaya Pranaya, uh, Mahima Kitri Shobhanaiva. What is the glory of Radha? The glory of Radha is that she is, uh, Krishna is all spiritual truth and joy. But Krishna becomes mad for Radha. And Krishna is all supreme strength and power. But Radha defeats Krishna. Krishna is the supreme dancer. But Radha is his guru in dancing. So these aspects are the glories of Radha. Krishna is the repository of all contradiction. And Radha also she mirrors that contradiction. So this glory, Mahima of Radha, is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Then Svadhyena, uh, Svadhyena Madhurima Kidrishavanaiva. This Madhurima, Svadhyena Bhuta Madhurima Kidrishavanaiva. Madhya. So the great qualities that only Radha is aware of in Krishna um, are exemplified in the acts of Radha. Shimati Radharani, just for example, as a mother, is aware of the extraordinary qualities of her child. Similarly, Krishna, Radha, through her supreme love and affection for Krishna, she is aware of Krishna's great qualities. Krishna once he saw his reflection in a mirrored column, column of jewels, and he was astonished by his own beauty, but he couldn't taste that beauty. But when Srimati Radharani manifests, 
Then Krishna can taste this beauty. Srila Gurudev has described very simply an example. Say a man has a music shop and he has many musical instruments, but he can't play any of those instruments, but he has a friend who can play all of those instruments. So similarly, Krishna, he is the repository of all ras, but the taste of that ras can only manifest when he's in the company of Srimati Radharani. And then there is the sweetness that Radharani experiences by tasting Krishna's love, which is millions and millions of times greater than Krishna himself tastes. So Krishna, he takes the bhav and kanti, tad bhavad ya samajani sachi garo sindhu harindu. He takes the bhav and kanti of Srimati Radhika and manifests as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just simply 5,000 years, 500 years ago. So this um, example shown by the life and teachings of Mahaprabhu is giving us an understanding of who is Srimati Radharani, what is her greatness, what is her sweetness, and what is her glory. So this is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And the happiness that she's experiencing is also exemplified when Krishna, he praises the gopis, when he comes back, so he's describing here how he's 